morning students welcome back today i am going to start our next chapter that is chapter 2 motion in one dimensional and learning outcomes of today's class are rest and motion one dimensional motion scalar and vector quantities distance and displacement concepts of speed if we look around us we can see the things which are in the different state that means some objects are stationary that means they are not moving and some are moving so how can we determine or differentiate their states so here i am talking about the states of the object that is rest and motion so uh, basically what is rest and motion so a body is said to be in rest if it does not changes its position with respect to a fixed point fixed point that means the reference point okay so to a fixed point in its surrounding Uh, suppose, for example, a book is lying on the table, which is not changing its uh, position with uh, respect to the table or the room in which it is kept. So, uh, rest is the stationary position of the object. That means, uh, when the object does not change its position with respect to the surrounding or with respect to the time, that position is called the rest. Okay. now motion how can we determine or uh, uh, how can we uh, uh, differentiate uh, how can we define that what motion in one word that is uh, motion is the movement okay so when we can say a body is in motion so a body is said to be in motion if it changes its position continuously with respect to a fixed point in its surrounding so for example uh, that cars and buses they are running on that uh, that uh, uh, roads okay birds they are flying in the sky the aeroplanes all are in the state of motion that means when object changes its position continuously with respect to a fixed point or with respect to the time that is called the motion so these are the states of motion of any object as we have seen in our previous classes motion can be 1d 2d or 3d that is uh, one dimensional two dimensional or three dimensional so here we will discuss about uh, one dimensional motion because in our syllabus only one dimensional motion is given so we will discuss about that only so what is one dimension motion uh, the motion of an object is said to be one dimensional motion if only one out of three coordinates that is x y or z specifying the position of the object changes with respect to the time that means uh, an object can uh, can be in the motion or can be change is the its position only in one direction okay suppose the motion of a body in a straight line that will be the example of one dimensional motion so one dimensional motion is said to be if any of the space coordinates is required to completely specify the motion suppose the motion of a car on a straight line this is also one of the example of one dimensional motion or uh, motion of a train on a straight track that is also will be the one dimensional motion okay so this is all about the one dimensional motion now we will discuss about very basic topic that is the scalar and vector quantities as we know that all physical quantities are classified into two groups that is scalar and vector so what are the scalar and vector many of you have known about that but now we will see uh, because it is given in the syllabus so scalar quantity what are the scalar quantity so scalar quantity that means a physical quantity which is described by its magnitude only magnitude that means uh, that is uh, its size or the numerical value okay so a physical quantity which is described by its magnitude only uh, are called the scalar quantities suppose the length distance area volume mass time power energy speed and temperature are the examples of scalar quantity because in this quantities uh, only magnitude is required there is uh, no need of the direction okay so these quantities are called the scalar quantities okay now the second quantity is the vector quantities so a physical quantity which required both the magnitude and as well as the direction for its complete description okay uh, like uh, displacement velocity acceleration force weight and momentum because in this quantities uh, uh, with the magnitude 
direction is also needed. So these are the examples of vector quantities. Okay, now we will uh, study about the, the some scalar and vector quantities in detail. As I told you that we will discuss about the scalar and vector quantities in detail. So here I am talking about one scalar and vector quantity that is distance and displacement. In our everyday life, distance and displacement are considered as same, but in physics, the both are different quantities. So what are the distance and displacement? Distance is the actual path or the actual length of a path uh, by a moving body irrespective of its direction. Irrespective of its direction, that means in distance, direction will not be mentioned. That means only the actual length of the initial point to the final point uh, is called the distance. Okay, uh, the units of the distance in a CGS system is centimeter and in SI system is meter. You can see in the diagram. Uh, uh, distance. Uh, suppose the distance uh, uh, traveled by a body or uh, by a person that is uh, a, from point A to B and point B to C then point C to D. So what is the total distance covered by that person? Suppose A to B it is, it is 4 kilometer, B to C it is 4 kilometer and C to D it is 3 kilometer. So the total distance will be 11 kilometer by uh, addition of all the points okay so distance will be the actual length of the path traveled by a body actually it is the scalar quantity because the direction is not mentioned here so distance will be the scalar quantity now displacement displacement is the shortest or the strict uh, distance between initial and the fin final point of a moving body or the change in the position of a moving body in a particular direction. In a particular direction, that means direction is mentioned here. That means displacement is the vector quantity. That is, uh, you can see in the diagram, displacement is the straight distance from point A to C. So this is called the displacement. And what will be the distance in this diagram? Distance will be A to B plus B to C. Clear? So displacement and distance both are different. Okay, now displacement uh, uh, as we uh, as we know that displacement is the distance only. So the units of the displacement will be same as the unit of distance. So in CG system, the unit of displacement will be centimeter, and in SI system, it will be meter. Okay, now the displacement of a body uh, may have positive, negative, or zero, but distance cannot be negative or zero okay this is the main difference between the distance and displacement distance can be positive only it cannot be negative or zero but displacement can be positive negative or zero but how can and when we can uh, say the displacement can be uh, positive negative or zero okay so in positive displacement when the value of the final point is greater than the initial point okay that means suppose the initial point is uh, x1 and final point is x2 if the x2 is greater than x1 then we can say the displacement will be positive okay now the negative displacement when the value of the fi final point is less than the initial point that means x2 is less than the x1 then we can say the displacement is negative and when we can say the zero displacement when the value of the final point and the initial point are same okay when we can say the final uh, that zero displacement is there suppose body is moving uh, from point a to b and again again it is uh, coming to point b to a that means the initial position and the final position are same so that we can say that displacement is zero but displacement but distance will be double in that case that means from point a to b and then point b to a that will be the total distance but displacement will be zero so this is all about the distance and displacement and this uh, you can see the difference in the it is given in the book also so uh, displacement is the vector quantity that is why all the vector quantities are denoted by the arrow because arrow shows the direction okay now we will see our next 
scalar quantity that is the speed and uh, what is the speed so the speed is the ratio of the distance traveled by the body to the time taken that is uh, called speed and the formula of the speed is distance upon time so how we can find that uh, their unit so uh, the unit of the distance is meter and the unit of time is second so in that way we can find the unit of the speed and it will be meter per second so speed is the ratio of the distance traveled by the body to the time taken okay now we will see the kinds of speed that is how many types of speeds are there so first kind of speed is the uniform speed as it is mentioned in the their name that is uniform that means the same way so when a body covers equal distance in equal interval of time then it is said to be in uniform motion you can see in the diagram that car is moving with the uniform speed that means uh, from the initial point to the final point that means uh, it is taking uh, uh, in every 2 second it is taking uh, that 4 meter that it is uh, uh, that uh, traveling 4 meter that means from point O to A uh, in 2 second the time interval is 2 second and the distance traveled by that car is meter in another uh, uh, that point that is uh, from point a to b it is taking uh, in the next two second it is uh, traveling four meter that means the distance is same as well as the time interval is same that means the car is moving with the uniform speed so in such a case we can say that uh, that the body is in the uniform speed now the next one is the non-uniform non speed that means when a body covers unequal distance in equal interval of time or, uh, or equal distance in unequal interval of time then, time then we can say that the body is in the non-uniform motion. You can see in that diagram, second diagram that uh, car which is covering uh, that distance from point uh, O to A. In 2 seconds, it is taking the distance of 1 meter. Okay. In the next point, in another 2 seconds, that means time interval is same. Now it is taking, that means it, the total distance is 10 meter. In another next uh, 2 seconds, it is taking another distance. That means the time interval is same, but the uh, distance covered is unequal. Okay. So in that case, we can say that the body is in non-uniform motion or it is uh, uh, that it is in the non-uniform speed okay now the next speed is average speed average that means when the body travels a non-uniform motion uh, non-uniform speed can be obtained that is uh, when the body uh, covers unequal distance in equal interval of time or equal distance in unequal interval of time it is the ratio of the total distance traveled by the total time taken that means we can find the average speed by putting this formula that is total distance travel upon total time taken so this is the average speed now the next speed is the instantaneous speed instantaneous speed that means if the speed of the body changes continuously or frequently with the time then uh, and it is obtained by dividing the distance traveled in a very short time or uh, by the time interval so this is the formula to find the instantaneous speed that is the distance traveled in a very short time upon time interval so suppose the example of instantaneous uh, speed is uh, the speed of the pendulum this is also the example of instantaneous speed okay so these are the types of speed 